military surplus. From backpacks, messenger bags, water bladders, and all different types of rucksacks. Aversacks, satchels, bread bags. Military surplus is the best when it comes to uh, outdoor activities, bushcraft, hunting, fishing, anything outdoors. It's very well put together, very well sewn, and cheap to buy. So let's take a look at some of these items. We'll start off with the uh, satchels and bread bags, uh, gas mask bags. So let's take a look. Well, good day, everybody. Glad you can join me today. First off, today it's only 21 Celsius. I'll put the Fahrenheit up here, but it's 100% humidity like crazy, you know? like crazy. I'm already sweating and it's only been a couple of minutes. So, I'll enjoy my tea and uh, I just want to talk about a few things. Military surplus. Satchels. Bread bags. Gas mask bags. Small little packs. Um, <laughs> forging pouches. Now, there's so many ways you can go about this. You can go get good quality for an inexpensive uh, cost, which is military surplus. Or, you could spend big bucks and go with the brand names. But if you think about it and go with the brand names, you get one item. Take that same amount of money, spend it on uh, military surplus, and you can get a variety of stuff for the same cost. Alright? So I just wanted to go over a few things. and. You have like uh, the forging pouch you wear on your belt. You undo it. Wax canvas. Okay. And there it is. It's got a belt loop on it. When you're wearing it, you can pick berries. You can pick um, uh, tinder. You can pick... Uh, uh, like all your birch bark, uh, pine needles, uh, whatever you got to make a fire with, or uh, edibles. There you go. All right. You can use uh, the foraging pouch. Now, myself, I also enjoy having a haversack, a bread bag, satchels, all that to carry around on a day-to-day -day base, whenever I'm out in the boat, whether it's fishing, hunting, foraging, or just just a day out in the woodlands. All right, so I just want to give you some ideas on what's out there, right? So um, this is more like a, a backpack, okay? It's a flip over lid. It's got two pouches. Now, it's a nice canvas. This one here is from the uh, early 50s. And it's the uh, Boy Scouts of America bag. I don't know if that's going to show up.
So what I'll do is I'll put a picture of the emblem right here. It's a nice small strap. You can put it over your shoulder, but it's a fair size, right? As you can see, according to my chest. That's one route. All right. But if you find that a little too big for just a, a couple hours out in the uh, out and about in the bush or whatever, there's multiple other items which you could have your satchels which is just a shoulder bag nice size it's what uh, maybe I don't know eight inches by ten inches and probably about three four inches excellent little bag Just fits around the shoulder, hangs down in front. You can use that for foraging, or you can have a uh, um, small little kit. Whether you're going out for the day, you can have, uh, uh, let's say, um, a pot, a cook stove, or anything like that. Anything small. For foraging, excellent little bag. I have this one here. I believe is in the late 40s, early 50s. I have three of these. This one and uh, two others. I have one in my truck that I have supplies in, and I got one in my white trailer that I also have supplies in. Then I have this one, which is a little older, as a spare. And then you can get something just a little bit bigger, again, in size. This is a little smaller, this one's a little bigger. All right, and in here, again, you can use for anything. But what I have is I have birch bark, I have all kinds of uh, fire starter stuff, This here is just a chunk of uh, bark that I can put on the ground, process some wood in, start a fire, transfer it to the pit. I got a plastic bag and that's uh, I keep that in there so if I see any garbage around, I can take other people's garbage and my own garbage out of the bush. But yeah, so in here, it's just stuff I can make a fire with. So when you're walking alongside your trail, and you see something that you can use to help uh, build your fire, winter time, summer time, spring time, whatever, you just gather it up. But you gotta gather up, if you're gonna make one fire, gather up enough to make four or five fires. You just never know if you're gonna need it. You can always bring it home, or you can always just leave it out there. Another, another excellent product, like I said, this one's a little smaller, and this one's the next size up. Excellent for forging or building a kit. You can have a cook kit in. Now this is a Polish bread bag. And inside you have compartments. All right. You got fasteners, little pouches. On this two in the side, two in the middle, and you got a divider in the middle of the bag itself. It's small. Okay, this one here is probably, oh, I'd say 10 inches by 12 inches square and probably about three and a half inches wide. Okay, this here is an excellent, excellent idea of a bag to carry with you out and about. You can do so much with this, so much with this. So I have this one for myself. 
And what I did is I have one also for my wife here. So she considers this her out and about bag, her bush bushcraft bag type idea. All right. And as you can see, it's about four inches, three and a half, four inches wide. You can shoulder strap it, grab handles. But what's nice about hers or them, it's so easy to open, pull the ribbon, slide her out, and there you go. That's her bag. She's got all kinds of things in there. She's got a couple of knives. She's got, uh, well here, let me just undo this center strap. Okay, she's got a couple of knives, some fat wood. Okay. She's got uh, a pair of rod striker, cook pot, Stanley, also nested with a cup. She also has in here a little stove, alcohol stove. Okay. Doesn't fit this. Doesn't fit that. But if you take this, turn it like this, light it, put this on top. Then you can use whatever size pot you have. All right. Uh, what else she got in there? She's got a small multi tool, and that's just in case she's got to lift something off the fire or off the heat. Got some fire starters. Titanium spoon. Matches. She's got another uh, BRS stove so she can have a canister in here. She also has her twig stove, she's got tea lights, she loves the tea lights, and then what else has she got in there, oh, <laughs> she's got a lighter in the front. And what else is in here? Oh, that's her uh, Esbit stove. Yeah. So she's got an Esbit stove, and that's what she uses the tea lights for in here. Just to uh, warm up some water, some tea, coffee, or whatever, right? You'd be surprised how well these tea lights work with this stove. If you want to stay away from your solid fuels or your gel packs, works great. So just to give you an idea, like she's well set up, for sure, for sure. Like, you know what I mean? And that's all in her little bread bag. Polish. This is a Polish bread bag. Beautiful item. She carries all this and she's got room for more. So that's another great idea. All right, what else she got in there? Oh, no, that's all. So, just to give you an idea of what you could store. So, myself, I love them type of ideas. You grab that, you got your pack on, you got your shoulder bag on, you can put all your 
cooking supplies in there, your knife in there, fire building stuff in there. And then in your backpack, you got your bedroll, your sleeping bag, your a uh, couple spare uh, pieces of clothing, socks, uh, whatever. And you can go out for a night or two. Not a problem. Your food, your water. All right. So I got myself a kit, which I never put together. And she's got her kit. Another great idea is right here. It's smaller. You got your carrying harness, or you can wear it either way, around your waist or over your shoulder. It, it's your call. Again, it's a nice snap. You open it up, but this is a very, very small bag. This is excellent as a foraging bag. It's nice and small. It's got a nice little small pocket on the side with a button. Okay, small little pouch. You could put uh, you could put a Leatherman in there or something with a small knife. Put it in there, close her up, or you could put uh, a BRS stove in there. You want to do some forging? That's a perfect size little pouch. All right. Again, military surplus. Now this one here is the uh, Soviet era Polish gas mask. Used to have your gas mask in here and a spare filter on the side. Now that is an excellent forging pouch. Satchel. Excellent. Excellent idea. The next size up is these. Now, these here are your... Uh, Chinese style. Now this here is your uh, your drum magazine pouch. So they'd have the round magazines in here, or they'd have a couple of magazines in the side here, side pouch, or even their gun cleaning or whatever, right? There you go. So you can carry it over your shoulder got a side pouch and again that, that's excellent for forging that's just a beautiful size it's probably what two inches wide by about uh, six inches across and six inches deep nice small small pouch nice little lock here that goes around your toggle there you go that is an excellent pouch okay Chinese drum magazine aversack I, I, I it's canvas still can't I, I like I liked it so much I bought four of them because these are great I'm gonna have all kinds of stuff stored in these I'll put one in the truck I'll put one in the trailer hey I'll put one in my side by side or my quad it's canvas. You can't go wrong with these. All right. Now these here, what did I pay? I got four of them for 32 Canadian dollars. Four of them. Free shipping. Can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong. Very, very inexpensive. Military surplus. Now, this uh, gas mask bag, okay, also from uh, Poland, Polish, Soviet area. I paid $8 for this one and $4 for shipping. So 12 Canadian dollars I paid for this little pouch. It's a cloth, okay? 100% cotton, but it's not canvas. But it's an excellent, excellent bag to have. These here Polish bread bags are unbelievable. What did I pay for these? I marked it down as $15. I bought these for $15, okay, and it was $4.95 Canadian to have them shipped. 
very inexpensive. Unbelievable. All right. I like that it has all the interior pockets and pouches and whatever that you could store all your stuff in. Yes, the hip foraging pouch is nice, but you could do a lot with the military surplus haversacks, gas mask uh, bags, uh, bread bags. Uh, they even got the nice satchels for first aid that has individual compartment. I think there's three different compartments in them. You know, you could put your cook kit in one, your a couple of meals in the other, uh, your canister and stove in another. You could do a lot with them. All right. Now this one here is also another gas mask haversack bag. This one here has got uh, molly webbing on it. That houses two side pouches, Velcro. Hey, that that pouch there is about ten inches. One on each side. Okay, easily, easily put in your mora. Put in your two knives on the one side. You could have uh, on the other side. You could have your ferro rod, whatever. But inside is nice. It's all Velcro. Okay. It's got snaps and Velcro. And you can undo it with the zipper, pull it down if you've got to increase the size. Okay, in here I got my straps. Now that could be to hold around my waist or I can use it for a shoulder strap. It's, it's a very, this is a very, very nice pouch. Very well put together. It's got the side pockets inside, one on each side, and side pockets on the outside. Like, you can't go wrong with that. Like, I know it was for a gas mask, and I know it's for your filters and whatnot. But you can use that for anything. Anything. That's an excellent, excellent bag. This here is a British. Okay, what is this? Uh, this is... Yeah, okay, so this is the... Uh, which one is this? The multi... It's called the multi-terrain pattern GSR respirator pouch. All right. Now you can buy them like I did with the two side pockets and I paid with the two side pockets I paid $22 Canadian and it was $8 shipping or you can buy it without the two pouches and I believe it was $16 and the same for shipping. I chose to order mine with the two detachable side pouches. Again, military surplus. <laughs> you just can't go wrong. Your clothing. You want to rough it in the bush or hunting or anything. And you want to blend in. OD green. Uh, you got your woodland. You got all different types of breakup or whatever, right? So, think about it. Sometimes, if you're looking for something, stay away from the brand names. Think military surplus search it online or go visit the nearest outpost in your in your area in your city very very inexpensive stuff so right now that's just uh, some ideas that I have for a foraging bag um, a walk a trek through the bush if you're going hiking or whatever for just the day or a couple hours you can you can take one of these satchels with you. You know what I mean? You don't have to carry a big, big backpack. But anyways, that's just a quick look at, uh, at a couple of uh, ideas for a uh, <laughs> an excellent item to have with you. It's, it's excellent. So anyways, thanks for coming. 
Thanks for joining me. Uh, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Drop in a comment. What do you use just for a trek in the woods? Do you just put stuff in your pocket? Do you carry something like this? Or even something a little bigger like this? Or something like this? Like that, that's a nice little bag. You know what I mean? You could, you could put a lot in there. So anyways, thanks for coming guys. It's been a pleasure. And that's just some ideas. And it, it, you know what? It doesn't hurt <laughs> to go secondhand surplus or pay the extra $2 or $3 or whatever and still get the surplus in new mint condition. Take care, guys. Bye now. Now, time to put my wife's stuff away. <laughs>